in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Irvin, and I'm here to talk about my favorite subject, Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Today, I'm going to look at Matthew uh, 5, maybe 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? If the salt is no good, <clears throat> what are you going to do? What are you going to use for salt? It is therefore good for nothing but to be thrown out and be trodden under the foot of men. So to be thrown on the ground. If, if, you, if the salt has lost its saltiness, it is no good and to be tossed into the street. Salt is used as a preservative to save meat and food from spoiling as Jesus Christ saves our souls from damnation and separation from God for sinning and falling from grace. Mark, this is not the only time salt is used. So in Mark 9, chapter 9, verse 50, salt is good, but if the salt has lost its saltiness, what do you use for seasoning? So have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. The word of God says, stir up that which is in you. It's so easy to get, and I'm the world's worst, to get lazy just to watch TV, to sit around and think, hey, you know, I'm going to pray for them. And pray, and, listen, some people, some people can't get out of bed. So I, I'm fortunate. I can walk. I have my legs. I have my hands. I have my eyes, ears, everything, you know, everything works so far. And that, what a blessing. Some people can't get out of their bed. And their ministry of prayer is so important. For those of us that can get up and around, we need to be spreading the word. We need to be salty. We need to be letting, letting, we need to be telling the truth of Christ because hell hath enlarged itself because people are going to hell. Hell was not made for human beings. Hell was made for the fallen angels. But there's, there's only one place to go when you're a sinner, because God won't, will not be with sin. So there's, there's one other place to go, and that is with the fallen angels, and that is hell for those who don't know Christ. So we should be salty. We should be good for something, and that good is telling people about Christ. We also have, um, that was, uh, so, so that, was, that was Mark also talking about salt. We also have, have Luke mentioned again and and Luke 14 34 and 45 so Luke 13 excuse me Luke 14 34 and 35 salt is good but if the salt has lost its savor what do you season with it is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill but men cast it out he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So those who are tuned to the Spirit of God, those who have been awakened by Christ in the throne, uh, in the throne of their heart, know that this word is true. So we also have, we also have, uh, let's see, I think Colossians, Colossians four six. Let your speech be always with grace and seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. So salt is, is a, a very important for life here on earth, and it is also that is also important for the the li eternal life here on earth and to be to be with Christ, because the saints need to be salty. We need to be preserving life by telling the word of God. If you're not doing that, stir up what's in you, pray, get into the word, and, and, and ask the Lord, Lord, give me the boldness to tell others about you, your perfect name, your perfect salvation. That's a, that's a prayer. Prayer, prayer for boldness. I, have to, I wrote a song about it. Um, Lord, my prayer to you is the boldness to proclaim the majesty of your name. 
That's, that's a prayer. And I wrote, I wrote a song about that. But anyway, let's see. We got Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 6 and 7. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. So Paul's not even with Timothy, but he's saying, stir it up. Stir it up. Think about it. You, you know, if you say I can't do something, then you probably can't. But if you say I can do something, then you you can. You, it, it, you know, so so I can tell others about Christ. I will not be scared. This is too important. We are to, Christ said, occupy until I return. So we are an occupying army. Uh, that's six and seven. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So we do not have the spirit of fear. We boldly proclaim the name of Jesus because it's the truth. And another lesson I was talking about, truth and light. Light, Jesus is the light of the world. What does he, what does he, what does he say? Everything he says, true. Excuse me, truth. So back to Matthew, that was, that was 13, uh, the salt of the earth. 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Jesus Christ is the ultimate light, the ultimate truth. I am the way, the life, and the truth. So you, now that I've left you to do my bidding, which is to spread the word of God, you are now the light. We are the little lights. And you don't put a light on the ground. You don't put a light in the corner of the room. Where do you put a light? You put a light high up. You put a light where you're reading. You put it up where it'll come down in the book. So you, you put the light where it does the most good. And that's where, that's where Christ puts us where we'll do the most good. So wherever you're at, that is your ministry. You are the light to that portion of the world, whether it's your family, your, your friends, your neighborhood, your community. You are to be that light. And in order to, for your light to shine the brightest, read God's word and Rivers of living water will flow out of you. When you read God's word, God brings it to remembrance. And when you're having conversation, you will be amazed at the word of God that comes out of your mouth because you've been reading it, studying. God says, meditate on my word. When you meditate on his word, there's so much gold in his word. When you meditate on his word, he brings it alive and you'll just be thinking about it. What does that mean? The Lord, what are you saying? And what does that mean? And suddenly, it'll dawn on you, he will reveal it to you, what it means. There's so much gold in God's word. There's, there's, I, I, that's why I continue to read it over and over, because he continues to show me new things. So, we are the light of the world, while, while the, the true light is, is back on the throne, Jesus Christ. Neither do men light candles and put it under a bushel. And that that's that's me. I've got I've got to get out from under the bushel. I've got to I got to go out and and minister. I, I, tell people about Jesus. Okay, a lot of times you know you get bogged down and the the, the cares of this world start to seem like they weigh on you. But you got to shake that those off. And and a lot of times I get I give out tracks and um, these are uh, just little little Christian little Christian tracks that you can get anywhere. And um, that's that's one of them. These are chick tracks, but the entire thing it tells a story of of just a, a, a nicely a nice with nice pictures and a story and about somebody coming to know the Lord. And at the end is the way to salvation. So so you know stir up what's with within you, and and you can listen. You can write your own tracks. You can cut out pieces of paper and just just write out Bible verses on them. Um, all all that call on the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Um, you know, just just pick some some Bible verses and just hand them out and, and say, I, "I care about you. I want you to know I care about you. I care about your soul." But anyway, we are the light of the world. 
So, so you don't hide your light under a bushel, but you put it on a candlestick. Why? So people can see it. So people can use it. So, so it will be of use. A light is of no use hid under a bushel basket. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So when your light is shining before men, you are planting seeds. You're planting seeds. Even the thief, one of the thieves on the cross, there were, there were three people on the cross that day. The one and only begotten son. And by the way, don't get confused over begotten anymore. Begotten means brought forth. It is not one simply born. It is brought the one and only brought forth son. He came to this world to die. That was his mission. He preached, he taught, he healed, then he died. That was his mission. And that's how he conquered Satan and the evil, the evil angels and sin. And, and uh, that's how he, he uh, conquered the devil and our enemies. And the, if they would have ever known that killing the Lord of this world was going to be their downfall, fall, they would have never put Christ on a cross. But there were, there were three on the crosses that day, Christ and two thieves. And the two thieves were both laughing at him like everybody else was and picking on him. And, and, but finally, one thief stopped. And it must have been a revelation. He said, wait a minute. We're guilty, but you did nothing wrong. Lord, he said, Lord, which means I'm telling you right now, I want you to be my ruler. He said, Lord, Remember me, think of me when you get into your kingdom, when you come into your kingdom. He had nothing to lose and everything to gain. And he refused to be separated or to, to die with the thought of not knowing what's going to happen. So instead of choosing, I don't know what's going to happen after I die, he's choosing Lord, I want to be with you. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So, let your light so shine before men. So there was a seed planted in that man. There was a seed planted. Whether, whether it was all the people laughing and railing at him, or whether it was, was, was uh, uh, Mary and, and, and Peter and, and those apostles standing around, or the disciples standing around crying, but something touched that man and light came in his heart. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and plant a seed. Plant a seed. You're not going to save anybody. Only God can save them. But you can plant a seed. You can be a part of his ministry just by saying Jesus loves you. We are, we are peacemakers. We're not mean, we're not cruel, we're not fighters. We're peacemakers. And when somebody's hurting, and a lot of people are hurting now, the e an easy way to plant a seed is show them you love them, show them you care, and pray with them. God bless. Jesus is Lord, and Jesus loves you. Thank you.